Hey guys, today we're going to be building this cornhole practice board. It has a removable fence, a couple dowels, practice air mailing it in. Going to get this thing built. We're just going to use a spare sheet of plywood and let's get to it. So we're going to be using some three quarter inch birch for this build. Uh, if you haven't worked with plywood a lot, plywood can vary in thickness depending on the quality and where you get it from. So you want to check the thickness of the plywood itself because the front of our deck is going to be three inches off of the ground. So we're going to initially set our saw to make up the difference of whatever the thickness of the plywood is to make our three inches. And then we're just going to cut the top down to 10 inches wide. This is going to be a practice board again, so not a full size board. Go ahead and cut this. We are going to make it regulation length though. So we're going to cut it to 48 inches. If you'll notice, there is a, almost looks like it's snowing in the video. That's all the sawdust. Hopefully soon I can get a filter system set up and get some dust collection set up as well. Would recommend wearing a mask. I normally do. I don't have any at the moment. I plan on getting some more. Hopefully eventually getting a mask with the filters that can be changed out of some type. Now, since this is 10 inches wide, I use the track a lot, and I will be using it a lot in these videos until I get a new miter saw. My miter saw will only cut about 5.5 inches, so anything that is over that, I just typically just use the track. It works great. have that little Ryobi battery-powered circular saw on it, and cuts through everything just fine and the Craig AccuCut actually is pretty accurate. I haven't had any problems with it and I've built quite a bit of stuff with it. Right here I forgot that I'm going to need more uh, wood cut to that original dimension for the sides. And that one piece that I cut was nowhere near long enough to make two 48 inch sides plus a front and back and two legs. Cut them on down. And right here I'm just cutting some pieces. These aren't to any particular length. I'm just kind of cutting them down to close to the right length. Those are going to be our front and back which will go in between our two side pieces we mount. Now for the hole, the hole is supposed to be six inches in diameter and it's supposed to be the center of the hole is supposed to be nine inches from the back of the board. So we just measured nine inches down. I'm gonna put a nail in there, center it up between the sides and that nine inches down. I've never actually tried this trick before, but since I don't currently have a six inch hole saw, I thought I would try this out and it actually worked and the came out round. Pretty impressed with this little hack. Going to use the jigsaw to cut out this hole. Uh, do plan on buying one of those six inch hole saws they have because I do plan on building some full size cornhole boards pretty soon and it'll just be a lot easier. But in a pinch, we'll do a plunge cut with the old jigsaw. We're just using a scroll blade on there. Anything that I happen to mention in my videos, I have no affiliation with. It's just stuff that I've found to work really good over time. Would recommend uh, the Diablo jigsaw blades. I've had really good luck with them. I have not broken a blade in quite a while and I am extremely hard on jigsaw blades. I tend to try to make cuts that are much sharper than 
what you should typically be making. Now here we're just going to take a round over bit and go over the inside of the hole. We want it nice and smooth. Some of the cornhole bags can be pretty expensive. You don't want to be getting rips in those. You don't want any rough edges anywhere. Now I didn't cut the full depth of the cut on the first cut. That's why I go around twice here. Working with plywood a lot of times if you try to go too much at one time with the router bit it will actually tear out and that kind of defeats the purpose of rounding it over and then always take some hand sandpaper and just go over you're just cleaning up any chatter marks created by the router bit any little splinters that might be sticking out And always toss the sandpaper for good measure. Now we move on. We are going to go ahead and mount our sides. We are just going to use glue to mount these sides on the practice boards. I have seen different techniques for mounting the sides on the full size boards. I have seen people use pocket hole screws. I typically use glue for just about everything because it's strong, makes a strong joint. Uh, since we are working with plywood and you're basically just gluing to the veneer, depending on the quality of the plywood, when I build the full size boards I probably will add some pocket hole screws on there to hold the sides in. Now if you'll notice the board is kind of bowed a little bit. So sometimes when you're cutting plywood and you cut it down, uh, it can have a tendency to do that. Which is not a problem because we're just going to, as we clamp it, just kind of push that into place. Make sure it's flush over on that side. I am actually going to flush mount mine and then just take that round over bit when we get done and go over it uh, you can also set that in that sideboard in from the edge a little bit if you want a little bit of overhang but I just went with the flush mount here let's say just make sure that it's flush all the way down the side if you're going to do that later on we'll go back with some sandpaper and clean off that glue residue on the outside and I'm just going to wipe it down on the inside. These, these boards are not going to be stained or painted. They are just going to have polyurethane on them, several coats. And yep, there's two sides. So we're going to add the other side. This board as well, bowed out a little bit. I say no big deal pop some glue on there just make sure you bow it back into place as you're putting your clamps on once that glue dries it'll be it'll stay nice and straight also if at any time you have any Comments, ideas, different ways you'd like to see the video done, things like that. I'm always open to any ideas. Uh, just throw them down in the comments there. Nothing wrong with a little constructive criticism to help make the videos better. Got a long way to go in figuring all this out, but... We will get there, and the videos will get better, I promise. Hey 
And here, those two pieces that we just kind of cut to a random length, we're going to go ahead and line one side up, and then we're going to mark the other side. Anytime I'm putting pieces in between like this, I like to sneak up on the fit. So I'll initially cut to that mark, go back and check it, see how it fits. And then if it's a little bit too long, which it typically is, uh, we'll just shave a little tiny bit more off on the miter saw. What you're looking for is a good snug fit. You don't want it too tight. So it'll push your sides out. But you want it nice and snug because the way your joints are very strong is by having a nice snug fit. Let's that glue cure properly. It makes it extremely strong joint. I've seen mixed reviews on these clamps. These are just the cheap clamps from Harbor Freight. I can honestly say I have never had an issue with these clamps. They get the job done. When I say they're cheap, you can buy a ton of them. Definitely recommend those for anybody starting out or just wanting to build a few projects here and there. And the joy of taking all the clamps off, knowing that our glue is nice and dry. And now we get to do that fun thing called sanding. Again, we're just going to go over, make sure we get all the glue residue off, get it nice and flush, nice and smooth. Kind of act a little goofy there, add a little fun to the sanding. It is a monotonous task, but it is the most important task if you want a good finish. And yep, there's some hand sanding. So all we're doing here is breaking down the inside edge. And anytime you're working with plywood, if you don't sand that edge, get a nice little round over on it. Uh, it leaves the opportunity for splinters or for things to catch on it and kind of tear it out. Pull that veneer off. Those are the things we want to kind of avoid. Now we are going to take the same round over bit and just go around the outside. If you're really tired, sometimes you should take a break because you'll do things like run the router backwards, which I did. And now we're going to go around the correct direction. No harm, no foul. Got lucky on that one. Didn't have any tear outs anywhere. And some more. We're just going to run an edge around the outside of the bottom. I do like this little Yobi 18 volt router. This thing has been super handy. And that's enough routing. Now we are going to place our fence, so I just came up with the plan to put the fence the same distance from the bottom of the hole as the hole is from the top of the board. The fence is supposed to be to get practice and getting more loft when you're tossing the bags. So we're going to make a line across here. I'm going to attach it. It's going to be removable, but it's going to be attached with just two dowels. And a little spring-loaded center punch. 
thing is awesome. So the fence, I'm just going to go from the inside of where the router curve stops on the top to each side. And that's how wide I'm going to make my fence. And again, with the sanding, like I said, it's, it is the most important thing you will do on any project is sanding. Also have to say that I really like, somebody recommended this Serious Grit Sandpaper to me. I ordered some to try it out and I will definitely be ordering some more. If you want to save a little money and not have to use a ton of sandpaper. Uh, it is a very good sandpaper. And I am definitely a fan of saving some money here and there. So the less sandpaper I use, the better it is in the long run. Decided to see if this dowel that I had was going to work. And I decided to go with a little bit smaller dowel. I'm actually just using 3 8 dowels on this and we'll see how they hold up. If not, I will come back and add some 7 16 dowel if the, the bags hitting that fence have a bad effect on those 3 8 dowels, but I think they should hold up just fine. So the easiest way to do this, if you don't have one, get one. This is a self-centering doweling jig. Um, they have better ones out there. This one is a super cheap one off of Amazon that I bought. The holes in the center of the bushings are off just a little bit on some of them. So the big key is just making sure you take that into account if you're going to build some furniture or something or laminate some boards together for a tabletop. Make sure that you are getting that little bit off on those bushings oriented on each board so that it comes out flush. There's little tiny marks on there as you can see that help you line up where your hole is going to be but all in all it's been really good definitely would recommend it makes things easier you're really just using dowels typically to line things up they're not really to add strength when you're using solid woods your glued joint is actually generally stronger than the wood itself it'll tend to break other places than where the joint is but the doweling jig does does really help when you're laminating boards together <laughs> to help keep things lined up now right here you want to make sure that you wipe all the glue off after hammering these dowels in because the fence is supposed to be removable and if you don't remove that glue well you're gonna have a permanent fence which would kind of defeat the purpose right we're just gonna waller these holes out a little bit we want them to be snug but not so tight that we can't put the fence on and remove it And here we're just going to build our legs. So all I'm going to do is try to make a hole kind of in the center width of the leg and about the same distance down from the top of the leg. That's why I'm kind of lining up and marking on the outside because I am going to clamp the leg to the inside, make my mark on the outside and drill through the 
side of the board and that leg at the same time just to make it a little bit easier and make sure my holes line up properly. I did get a light that goes around the GoPro and it seems to be helping quite a bit with the video. Like the last video I made it looked kind of like I was in a cave with no electricity at times. Here I'm just going to repeat the same process on the other side. Getting everything lined up. Also that pencil that I'm using, you can buy them on Amazon or at Walmart. It's a Pentel Graph Gear 1000 pencil. I think I got the 0.7 millimeter lead. It's really cool uh, for putting in my pocket because if you push down on the little clip, it actually retracts the metal hosel that the lead goes through and the lead inside of the pencil. Pretty fancy little deal. And here I'm just cleaning up any tear out from drilling through. I didn't put a backer on there. If you put a backer on there, you won't get that tear out when you drill through. Here we're just going to take a one of our polyurethane lids, spray can lids, and just draw some little marks on here. We're going to go over to the miter saw, my favorite way to do this, and cut off as much excess material as we can. You'll see me use the miter saw a ton in every video I make. I love the miter saw. Super handy. After I upgrade table saws here pretty soon, I am going to upgrade the miter saw. Really want a sliding miter saw so I can get some more capacity there. Again, that sandpaper, I'm just using some 220 grit that I ordered to try out, and I think that piece was on there for the whole day through all the projects that I did that day. Again, to the miter saw, getting rid of that excess. All we're going to do is round these so that they will pivot properly. Now I think the holes on mine were off just a little bit so I actually ended up kind of sanding it down on one side a little bit and almost created kind of a notch on the back where it would fold out into place. worked out pretty well. I'm not using bolts to put these on. I'm actually going to use some 7 16 inch dowel. 
that I'm going to run through there. Just kind of trying something a little different. Yeah, this is just a practice board. I will use bolts whenever I build the full size boards, but just going for a little cleaner look on this one. Even though it won't be stained or painted, uh, it'll still look pretty cool having everything flush. You can kind of see those notches in the video that I sand it into the back of each one of those now right here I didn't notice you may have noticed at some point that I did not cut the legs the length which I was going to do on the miter saw now the good news is we can go ahead and do that with a jigsaw afterwards not a big deal but it would have been a little bit easier just taking them over to the miter saw and cut them off. But in the end it worked out because I actually came up with a plan to kind of use the side of the workbench like I was going like it was the ground because the top of your deck in the back is supposed to be 12 inches from the ground. And so I was able to use the, create the angle off the side of the workbench to actually cut the bottom of the legs. Right here, I'm just cutting a couple braces that are going to go in between the legs. I'll glue in once I get the legs cut to the length. As you can see here, I measured from the top to the edge of the workbench, made sure that the front was flush with the edge of the workbench. Made it super easy to just make a mark across there, which actually worked out in the end because I already had the correct angle, so it sets properly on the ground. Just gonna trace that line onto the other leg and go ahead and cut that off. Clean it up a little sandpaper. We're gonna round all these edges as well. And we will actually end up, once we get our braces in the back glued in, once those glue up and we pull those clamps off, we will go around before we apply our coats of polyurethane and we will go once over with some hand sandpaper over all the edges, make sure everything is nice and smooth. making a couple marks here so I can line these braces up I do recommend several coats of polyurethane on these boards it makes it a lot more durable and you're looking for a nice smooth finish I generally put four to five coats on I let it dry and sand in between coats if there's any kind of roughness to it at all the final coat especially and then put a little wax on it uh, one of the things they want the boards to be very smooth I have not yet really gotten into the game cornhole but I probably will soon And that is that. Well, that was our build on the cornhole practice board. Got it done. We built this out of some birch. The only thing left to do is we're going to put a nice coat of polyurethane all over this, seal it, make sure that it's real good and smooth, sand between coats. 
That way the bags will slide nice and easy. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And I appreciate you. Check us out on Instagram at Story Woodworking. And I hope you all have a good day.